Welcome to an episode of Being a Better Game Dev. So, in this episode we are going to be checking out things like hard references, soft references. We're going to be talking about what they are, how they function. We're going to be checking out how the memory footprint of our different assets are affected by these things. We're going to be checking out how references hang together and how pointing at different objects causes a cascading effect if we have hard references and how we can make use of soft references to avoid this. We're also going to be checking out some different things like interfaces and components, talking about it a little bit and see how we can use that to offset a few of the disadvantages of these things as well. So stick around and check it out. Welcome back. So in this video we're going to be talking a bit about hard references and soft references, what they mean, what's good and bad about them, uh, how they work, and also some uh, workarounds uh, to, to avoid the, the worst offenders. So um, starting off, in this is a third person template project, uh, so it's just a third person character that's running around uh, when we start and I have done a few things in this project. I have added a asset. In this case, I've added a helicopter from the Vigilante asset set. It's uh, available for free on the mar marketplace if that's something that you want. Um, I have added a little bit of code to our third person character. Not a whole lot. We'll go through it once it's relevant. We have added some code inside of our level. Also, uh, very small amounts, and I'll go through that when it becomes relevant as well. Um, but starting off, what what does it mean to have hard and soft references? Well, if you take a uh, blueprint, for example, or any asset in Unreal Engine, you can go and check the reference viewer. The reference viewer gives you this or a very similar view. Uh, what this means is uh, this is the blueprint in this case that we opened up. And all the things to the right over here are assets that uh, are being used by this blueprint. All the assets to the left are things that make use of this uh, character in this case. So everything on the right is dependencies for the character and everything on the left is something that has a dependency of the character. Uh, so. Uh, how this works is each of these lines represent a, a, um, a dependency in the form of some kind of reference. In the case here we have white uh, lines and these are hard references. So a hard reference means that Unreal Engine, when it loads in a blueprint third person character in this case, it loads up all its hard reference dependencies and loads them into memory so that it can access them whenever they're needed in runtime. Um, this will show up, for example, if you go to, uh, actually let's go to our content folder and we go and right click on it and we say size map. Uh, our size map here in this case consists of 208 megabytes of memory taken and of these 208 megabytes you can see what the different aspects of this character uh, the memory is being used for so we can see that our skeletal mesh is here and it it uses 201.7 megabytes and it consists of these boxes that are consisting inside of it etc etc so we, we have a few different boxes here that represent the different usages for our character in this case um, now, when we have a reference in our character, so if we were to go to our character and let's say we create a new variable. So remember, in our size map, we had 208 megabytes. If we add another uh, variable here and we make sure to choose uh, BP West, which is the, the helicopter in this case, and I say I want to have an object reference or a class reference. These are both hard references. So if I click one of these and I compile and I save and I go back to our content browser and I check size map, you can see now that it's going to be 392 megabytes. So just by having that reference in our character, 
it now says to Unreal Engine that this is something I have a hard reference to, this is something I need to keep track of, so you need to load this into memory as well when I get loaded into memory. And if we go to our reference viewer, you can see here that we have these assets over here that we're depending on, or, or that we are yeah, dependent on. These are the ones that we load in. And in the bottom here, we have our context for default. If we were to refresh this, now you can see that below that context, we get now our helicopter. So now we have a hard reference to that other blueprint. And this is in our third person character. So what this means is, when we open up this map or when this game mode gets launched, uh, either of those say that they have a reference to this character, which will then load in the character and all its dependencies, which means all of these things. And that in case, in this case, means that we load in this helicopter as well. And if we double click into that, we can see that it has a set of dependencies as well that it needs to make use of, right? And you can also uh, set the search reference depth here to something higher. So if we were to do three or something like that, no, apparently not, it's the dependency depth, I guess. It's taking a little bit. Um, th this might be a little bit bloated for us to actually uh, get a good overview of, but essentially here you can see how this tree sort of uh, grows with each level. So there are probably further dependencies here that are all loaded in once this blueprint character is loaded in. Uh, so, so it's easy to see, I hope, that if you have hard references to a lot of different objects, uh, you will be loading in a lot of different things, a lot of different assets. And note that this is my third person character. And my third person character is inside of this map, but Despite the helicopter not being here, it will still be loaded into memory. So it's completely unnecessary in this case, right? So we're using up a lot of memory for no reason in this case. So we're going to be uh, removing that helicopter for now. Like that. Now, hopefully you have a basic understanding of, of hard references and how it sort of works. Let's take a look a little bit at soft references. So if we go into our third person character and we go in and create a variable and we call it helicopter. Inside of here, we can choose to have the type actor. And of these, we have the two hard reference versions up here, object and class. We have to have two soft object references in the form of a soft object, soft object reference and a soft class reference. So if you wanted to spawn in a, a another blueprint in the world, another class, we could take the soft class reference. Uh, in our type, we can have actor, but then as a soft object reference type class, we can choose to have, for example, our helicopter. So this means that it will take the footprint of an actor, but it can reference a West helicopter in this case. So if we go and check our uh, character, uh, let's see, we go over here, blueprints. We can see that our size map is the same. It's 208 still, it hasn't been affected by it because it's just loading an, another actor and it, on, it already knows about actors because we are an actor. Uh, using this reference now, we could spawn it into the world, but we can't spawn it in just straight up because if we do this and we say uh, spawn actor from class, <clears throat> it's going to be running a conversion from our soft re reference to this. Uh, but this uh, being a soft reference means it's not loaded into the world. So we have to manually tell it when to do so, which means that when we press here, for example, uh, on our press two key, we can say uh, asynchronous load um, asset class asset like so. This means that we will now tell it at this point here to load in this asset. So it won't take up memory until we reach this point. It will, however, be of the base type object class instead of an actor, which is needed for spawning an actor. So we can't just hook it up like so. So we could either cast it to an actor and then hook it up over here. Uh, but 
and of course we will have to do the okay this is not what it wanted i meant to do this cast actor like so no cast actor class there we go and if we hook it up like so it, we would be able to uh, spawn it into the world the asynchronous means it's going to be loading and be done at some point, which means that we have two execution pins here. We have one pin for when it's starting and one for when it's completed. So in this case, I would want to hook up to the completed one to say that, okay, once we have loaded into memory, then we want to spawn the actor. So if we were to go to our uh, map here and press the two key, and then I eject from here, I can see that the helicopter is over here. So we focus on it. And here we can see the helicopter. So we're spawning it into the world now properly and everything is fine, but our third person character is still going to have the, the memory footprint of 208 megabytes like when we started. The reference viewer now is going to be a little bit different. If we refresh the reference viewer, we're going to be seeing here now that we have our helicopter here like before, but we now have a pink purple kind of a uh, line instead of a white. So this means that we have an, a, a soft reference to this object. So it's not necessarily uh, needed to be loaded in once this asset is loaded into memory. Okay, uh, you could also, instead of just casting this actor, you could just hook it up like so, and this would work as well, uh, because this conversion is similar to the, the cast, essentially. So if we do this, eject, go here and focus on it, so you can see the helicopter here is being spawned. Okay, all is good and fine so far, I hope. So. With a soft reference like this, we won't take up as much memory uh, and we will have a different uh, relationship when it comes to the reference viewer in what kind of assets will be needed to load in. But we have the detriment of we need to choose when to actually load an asset in when we feel it's going to be needed. And of course, this means that we might need a little bit of time to do this depending on what kind of asset we load in. So that might be something that you want to consider as well. Um, the, the differences between a soft and hard reference when it comes to accessing them is that a hard reference is going to be faster uh, because it already has loaded it into memory so it's available. A soft reference, if you make use of it, needs to first check and see if it exists before it actually can access the, the object that it's referring to. Uh, but, but of course you have the memory as a offset for for that benefit then so the, the speed over the memory and how do you combat this kind of situation uh, other than using soft references how do you avoid uh, hard references like this well let's take a look at the code that i prepared so in our level we have if we go and open up our level blueprint here's our level blueprint uh, we, we're getting the third person character, we're calling two events on it, event one and two. These are the ones that we see up here. And they take in an actor as an input. In our map currently we do not have an actor referenced here, but let's say that we had our helicopter in the world here. Or this could be some other asset of course as well. So if we go to our third person map here, we can say that we want to create a reference to the helicopter and we say that we want to send that as an input to our events. Uh, what's happening here now is that in our third person character we're getting these events sent to us when we press the key and we get an actor here and let's say we wanted to do something with the helicopter. In the helicopter we have a little bit of code. We have an event that says helicopter event and we have an interface called helicopter interface event. When the event is called, the helicopter event, we print out that the helicopter event has been triggered. When the interface gets called, we call this event and say the same thing, essentially. So, if we were to go to our character now, compile, save, and go here and check the memory map, we can see that it's still at 208. But the moment we say, okay, we want to make this a cast to BP West, so that we are able to make use of the helicopter event. Uh, helicopter event, there we go. So now if I were to go in here and play, I press one, we can see that the helicopter event is triggered, it's printed up in the, the top left over there. Uh, 
But now that we have had added this cast to our class, that means that we have now created our hard reference. So if we go to reference viewer, we can see that it's back here with a white uh, line. And it's again going to be taking up memory for us, for our character, because we're forcing it to be loaded in now. So this way causes us to create a hard reference. And even if we didn't have this helicopter in the level, just the existence of this cast would say that this blueprint, this third person character, needs to have this helicopter loaded into memory to be able to function. Because we have this cast, it's a hard reference. If we remove this and instead say we want to call on the helicopter, uh, let's see here, helicopter interface event. So this one, is calling on an actor saying we want to call the helicopter interface event and since it is an interface it will work if it has the interface if it does not have the interface it will do nothing uh, the interface itself will again if we go in here and i press one you can see that the helicopter event is being triggered because we are calling the helicopter interface event which is calling the helicopter event which is calling the print string now if we go to our reference viewer refresh our character you can see we have a soft reference to our helicopter, which is of course from our helicopter over here. If we were to remove this, compile and save, <clears throat> fresh our reference, you can see that we don't have a, a, a um, dependency to anything except for our BPI here. And that one is just being used by helicopter. It's not actually a reference or a dependency for the helicopter. So this, this way we don't load in the helicopter at all. We don't have a hard reference to it. We don't have a soft reference to it. We're still able to uh, access the code in it. And if we check the memory, we can see that our size map is 208 as well. So an interface is one way to circumvent having hard references and avoid uh, both the, the hard reference um, dependencies and also the memory footprint of your classes. You could also do things with uh, things like components and stuff and offload things that way. Uh, I won't be showing that off in this tutorial, however. Anyway, uh, that is hopefully understandable and it's the, the, the sort of core concept of, of hard and soft references. Um, so. The benefit of hard references, again, it, you're going to be having faster access time to them because you always have the object available for you when you run. Um, the payment for it is that you have to load everything into memory and that could be easily getting out of hand if you have a lot of reference in. Because, again, if you have in your reference viewer here, you have, let's do it like this. We do a, well, let's do the cast. We do a cast, BP helicopter, no, not here, with helicopter there we go so in this case here we have the cost which means that we have a hard reference which means that it's, it is available here and if this helicopter in turn had a cost to let's say another helicopter then that helicopter would be loaded in and let's say that helicopter had i don't know a missile or something loaded in as a direct reference the, the tree just expands and explodes if you don't keep track of how you're making use of your different references so that's why it's easy that the, the, the memory consumption can just get out of hand when, when doing this. So the soft references are, of course, a better choice when you're having certain objects that you don't need to have available at all times. So it sort of depends on what kind of object that you're working with. Some things you will know that you always have reference uh, an, uh, a need for, and then having a direct reference, a hard reference, is, is fine, of course, because you're going to be needing to access it at, at all points or at any point. So the soft references allows us to have a, a smaller memory footprint. Uh, it comes at the cost of being a little bit more finicky to work with since you need to make sure that you actually load it into memory before you spawn it into the world or interact with it in any way and such. And uh, you have some options of circumventing uh, hard references as well, using things like uh, interfaces and components and such as well. So that's going to be all for now. Keep on learning. Take care. A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos, or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from.